Hi, this is Carrie from Scrap Your Chicks, and I just wanted to show you what our project is for the week. Um, it is a fun Father's Day book, and I made the book out of, you can see it's really chunky, I made it out of corrugated cardboard, and I love it because it just gives it a really fun um, thickness, and it's a great spot to do a fun book for your dad for Father's Day. We use some corrugated cardboard on the front, and then we use some ink on it, and then this right here is actually a switch plate cover from the hardware store. Um, it just adds a really, really fun metal detail to this that you... Um, you, you get a lot of dimension with that if you can kind of see how that really kind of stands up. Anyway, and then inside we did a whole bunch of different fun embellishments. There's a quote that goes with this, or I'm sorry, a poem that goes with this. Um, I did it on some shipping tags going all the way through so you can journal on the tags and you can add your pictures. And then all of these fun metal embellishments, believe it or not, did with a Diet Coke can. So what I did is I cut it apart and we use the back side of that. So um, if you're a subscriber, stay tuned, and we'll show you how to do those little details. So this is just a really fun little Father's Day book with a great little Father's Day poem going through it um, that you could do for your dad, and then just kind of um, put some pictures in there. I just kind of like using some, you know, ink and some distressing on the edges of the corrugated cardboard. It just kind of gives it a really fun kind of rustic kind of a look. This would also be really cute as a camping album or something like that. So um, if you're a subscriber, stay tuned and we'll get into the directions and show you how to put this together. Hi, okay, so what we are gonna start with first is our cover. So what I've done is I've cut all of my car uh, my cardboard pieces, so they're five by seven. Um, ignore the holes on this because we're actually gonna punch three holes. So what I did is I actually cut it with a chop trimmer, like a, a guillotine trimmer, because I wanted a really nice uh, finished edge. If you don't have a trimmer like that, I would recommend using a ruler and a craft knife. You can try cutting it with your regular paper trimmer or you can try cutting it with scissors, but sometimes it kind of makes the edge weird. So, you know, experiment around a little bit. You'll have lots of scrap because if one box, you can definitely get six of these little five by seven pages out of that. Um, so what I'm gonna do with each of these pages is we're gonna do a piece of pattern paper on the front and then we're gonna leave the back plain. But I wanna show you a couple different things that you can do on the backs to kind of give them a different sort of a look. And one of them is you can distress the edges. And the easiest way to do this is with the edge of a pair of scissors. So um, you just kind of go around like this and it kind of exposes the edge in kind of a funky way. And um, I wanted to do this on the back side of this before I put my paper on the front because I don't want to risk um, tearing up my paper that I'm going to put on the front or anything like that. So you can just kind of go around like this. You can, you know, experiment. Use some different kinds of sharp tools. You know, what kind of whatever you like. Um, you probably don't want to use your best scrapbooking scissors for a technique like this because as you can see, it's uh, it's probably kind of hard on the blade, so, uh, but we're going to cut some pop cans so you can get out an old pair of scissors or go take a pair out of your husband's desk. That's what I sometimes do. He's none the wiser um, when I need to do a project like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and go around and distress the edges. And you can see this is messy, so you might want to do all these at one time. Um, it just kind of gives it kind of a kind of a cool look. I mean, I think Father's Day is a great time to do these kinds of projects that you maybe normally wouldn't do in your regular scrapbooking. Anyway, so that's kind of the back side of that page. And, you know, you could expose some more of that, and I'll show you how we're going to do that in a second. But that's the back side, and then this is going to be my front side. Um, I don't have any ink or anything on this yet. No, I'm just going to use tape runner, but what you want to do is you want to put the tape runner on the back of the paper and then stick it down onto your cardboard. Um, because the cardboard, for some reason... It's kind of resistant to... Um, okay, so I'm putting my adhesive on the back side of my paper, and then I'm just going to stick that down onto one side of my um, cardboard page. So, um, just like this, just right to the edges. You know, if you're a little bit off, that's okay. You can add some ink, you can paint. You know, there's lots of different things you can do. We can go back and we're going to fix this all up later. Now, for the middle of the page, what I did is I took a piece of my corrugated cardboard and I cut this. It is actually um, about four by five. Um, and what I did is I peeled off one of the layers, not both of them, because you can kind of see the way car um, cord. Okay, sorry about that. I had changed my batteries. So basically, it's like a sandwich. It's two pieces of of basically a paper and then it's the corrugated piece that runs inside of it. So what I did is I peeled off the top layer and really the way to do that is 
you just um, you could just kind of go like this. Now you don't want to peel off both layers because what that will leave you with is just the corrugated piece. You want to leave that backing on there. One of the really cool things you can do at this point is you can actually paint this and then you can add ink to it if you want to do some color. There's all kinds of different things. So we're going to do this on our cover like this. And then on top of it, the really cool thing is this really fun um, metal plate. And this is from Home Depot and it's in the electrical section. And basically um, it's a switch plate cover. 50 cents, really fun embellishment. We're going to do it right in the middle of our cover like this just to kind of give um, our book a little different, just a really kind of fun, funky, masculine kind of a vibe. And then we're going to do some die cut letters in the middle there. So um, what I want to do first is I want to add a little bit of ink to my corrugated piece. Excuse me, I need to just go in front there. So I'm just going to take um, a brown ink pad and I'm just going to kind of just drag it around. And you can leave some of the paper on here if you want, just to kind of give it a different kind of a look. What I love about corrugated cardboard is that it's got such cool texture to it. You really can make it look a lot of different ways. You could really do this up to make it look really shabby chic too. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little ink around the edges of my pages at the same time to kind of make that all sort of match up like that. Um, so I've got my piece of corrugated cardboard. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down into the center of my, of my cover. Um, if you're having trouble getting your adhesive to stick, then you might just try going to some... Whoops, I didn't let that dry. Look how it made a mess on my counter. Um, you probably, you could go ahead and use some kind of a liquid adhesive, Tombow or 3-in-1 glue or something like that. Um, so we're just going to go ahead, we're just going to glue that right into the center of our cover. Like this, you know what? Don't glue it down. Before you do that, you want to punch your holes. I just remembered that. Because what's going to happen is we're going to have trouble getting our crocodile to reach in there. So what we're going to do is this cover is five inches. So we're going to come in one inch um, and up one inch, and then we're going to go at the two and a half inch mark. So I've actually already marked my holes and punched them on the back side. So I just need to do that one in the center. Um, and typically you would wait until you have paper on all of your um, pages before you did your holes just because it makes it a lot easier than you only have to do one set of punching. But um, I'm going to go ahead and punch this one before I decorate my cover. So I want three holes like that. Now you could do some cool, um, you know, like metal washers or something over that if you wanted to do something kind of really different. Um, so then we've got our piece like this, our corrugated piece. We're going to put that down right in the center. And then for this piece, um, the one thing that's kind of a little bit of a challenge is that it, it doesn't have a flat surface to adhere it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to screw the little screws right into the corrugated cardboard. So I'm going to punch holes and I'm going to screw it right down into the cardboard. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to use a little bit of liquid adhesive just around the edge to really adhere that down onto the cover. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I'll be back later to show you how my cover is all finished up what and what have you. So anyway, that's what we're going to do for our cover for this. So the back side, we've got that cool um, distressed edge that we did. And then I'm just going to do, uh, I'm going to do a blue photo mat on that back cover because my next page I'm going to do with a, my stripe piece like this. So in between each page, we're going to do a tag that's got that little poem going through it. And then we're just going to do a photo mat on each page with some different kind of little embellishments. So one of the things that I want to show you that we're going to do is we're going to make some metal photo corners and we are going to use da, 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 a Diet Coke can. This is great metal. It's really thin. It is sharp, so you need to be a little bit careful when you're using it. Don't cut this with your paper trimmer. What you want to do is you want to cut this with just a pair of utility scissors if you've got some old scissors, kitchen scissors that you use. So I wanted some half inch strips to fold these little photo corners. So what I did rather than put this in my paper trimmer is I cut a half inch strip of paper like this and then I can use that as my guide and then I can just cut that 
along there with my regular scissors. See how easy that is? So then what I'm going to do to make this into photo corners is I'm just going to fold that. We've done these before. Um, this folds really nice. Just be careful you don't cut your fingers. And then I'm just going to kind of pop that center up just a little bit. Now see how cool that is? So we can do these really funky metal photo corners. Another thing that you can do is you can actually add like a, a brad in the center if you want to give it kind of a nail head look. So what I did for that is I just have my little strip and then I punched a hole with my paper piercer and I put a brad in the center of that. So that's what we're going to do um, for our next page. We're just going to do some little... See how cool that will be some metal photo corners. So another thing that you can do with this, so we are going to do um, one of those little embellished strips. So what I want to do is I want to cut a longer piece from my can. And what you want to do to cut your can is just go ahead and take your pop can. Here's actually a full one, so I can't really show you. But um, I just took my scissors and I kind of poked a hole right here. And I cut the top rim off. And then I just cut down. And then you're going to cut around the bottom so you end up with a nice rectangular piece like this and you know your edges are going to be a little bit um, uneven that is just you know that's just the way it goes this is handmade right so it doesn't have to be perfect so just using that half inch strip if you wanted to you could just glue it right onto the back if that makes it easier for you as you're cutting out your piece like this so we've got our nice um, long piece like that of, um, of metal. And what we're going to do is we're going to create, instead of ribbon, huh, isn't that cool? We're going to put that across the bottom of one of our photo mats. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wrap that to the back. So I wanted that to be just a little bit longer. And then just use your photo mat to kind of trial fit. This is a 4 by 6 photo mat. You could actually also run it up the side. So I'm just going to wrap that around, and I just can use regular old scrapbooking adhesive for this. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take, and I'm going to do a couple of little nail heads. Um, so I'm just going to take my, um, I've got a little foam mat right here, and I'm just going to punch, let's do three. I like threes. Three little holes like that, and then I can just take, three silver brads and put into those spots. And what I've noticed as I'm putting my brads in is I've got three silver brads that are three different silver finishes. So you do want to take a look at that and make sure that they're all the same. Unless you want them to be different, that's fine too. So I'm going to put this one back in my dish. So there you go. So I've got my three silver brads. So then I can go ahead and just open up the back of those. So, you know, you can get creative with an aluminum can. There's lots of things you can do. If you've got like a, a, a die cut machine, like a, a Sizzix or a Cuddlebug or something like that, you can, you can emboss texture in it. You can, um, you can actually draw on the back and create your own texture. See how cool that's going to be on the bottom of that photo mat like this? So we're just going to put a little adhesive on those edges and wrap that baby around there. Um, you can you could cut shapes out of it. Uh, there's, you know, just a ton of different stuff. You can actually journal on it with like a Sharpie or a permanent marker. See, isn't that a cool thing? Such a cool embellishment. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and finish up my book. I'm going to do some other little things. Another really fun thing I'm going to do is taking, I took the top off one of my pop cans and I'm going to um, wrap some twill tape through that and just kind of finish up my pages. So basically what I'm going to do as I go through is I'm going to be putting a piece of paper on the front of each one of my cardboards and then I'm just going to distress the edges of my back side. I can add some ink. I'm going to do a photo mat on the back and either a 4x6 or a 4x4 photo mat on the other side. And then I'll be back to show you what it looks like when we get it all finished. Okay, I just wanted to show you real quick what I did on the cover. I um, took the screws out of my plate, and then when I did the left one, it went in just great. Pulled right into that cardboard, holding it really tight. The right one wasn't working. So what I did is I went and I put a little bit of liquid adhesive around the edge of the plate, and I put some in the hole where I'm going to just then put my screw back in. 
so hopefully that will hold it in. Um, that Tombow is really good for that. So you will need to get out your screwdriver if you're going to use these, but um, you might be able to use a butter knife, which I've sometimes done to take plate covers off. But by putting a little bit of Tombow in the hole, I think it will um, adhere the end of the screw into that cardboard too. So we'll just kind of get that in there really good, and then we'll come back and see if that works later. So that way I've got my little my screw plate on the cover, and then what I did is I have my die cut letters that spell out the word dad and I um, I cleaned the plate with some rubbing alcohol just because they sometimes have film and stuff on them and so and grease and everything like that and I wanted my letters to stick really well so um, that sometimes kinda helps I find that um, the Xyron really sticks well on almost everything so see how I got my dad letters right on there and then I'm gonna take from my sheet my what is a, and I'm gonna just put that um, up here along the top and I'm going to give a, put a little bit of ink around that. Anyway, so I'm back to finishing my pages but I just wanted to show you um, how we kind of work on that cover piece before I go on to any more pages. Thanks. Okay, so our book is finished. Um, I finished the cover. As you can see I put my die, uh, my die cut letters on the front and then um, I cut apart that pre-printed sheet that, that I included in your directions for the what is a and um, what I did is I actually glued this on with, with liquid glue because of the corrugated cardboard. I wanted to make sure that it stuck down really well. So that's our cover page. And then inside you'll see for each page that you have, um, you know, your two spots for photos. And then there's a tag I put in the middle. I just used um, five shipping tags to put this kit together. And then... Um, and the quote is included. Now I will tell you that I did some staples on the the quotes purely decorative. I didn't want to staple through the tag, so I just stapled through the quote and then I glued the whole thing down. Uh, so you can see a couple of our little details that I did here. I showed you how to do those photo corners. Those are out of that pop can. And then on the next page is that band where I did the three small brads. It looks kind of like um, it's riveted or something like that. Um, that's on the next page. And then here um, I've got a piece of twill tape and then this is my, my pull top and it looks kind of like a little buckle right there. So you can just kind of see as we go through the book. It's got that whole poem in there. Uh, here I did another strip with the metal. Sorry, I'm kind of getting out of the camera there. And then I did two larger brads there. Um, I did some different techniques with the corrugated cardboard here. I exposed part of it with uh, by peeling off some of the backing. If you do that, what you want to make sure is that you don't peel off the whole thing. You want to leave some of it intact because otherwise it starts to, um, you'll you'll end up ruining the page because it, it does need some of that um, to hold together. Then on the next page, what I did here is I cut my my paper, instead of cutting it five by seven, I just cut it a quarter inch smaller all around. And then I took a distressing and edging tool like this, and I went around and I really distressed the edges of the paper. And then I kind of curled it up with my fingers before I glued it down. So you get kind of a different sort of a, sorry, I'm kind of out of the camera again. I get kind of a different sort of a look. Um, here I've got some twill tape. And then on the, on the other page, what I did is I've got a tab. And all I did is I just cut out a rectangle out of my pop can, folded it over, and then adhered it with three small brads there up in the corners. Um, so you can kind of see some of the different things that you can do. And then um, this one I just cut um, some strips of my can, and I just wrapped around kind of a different kind of a photo corner. And then I did a piece of paper there on my back cover. So that is our whole book. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, you know, you could do this as a really cute shabby chic look if you wanted to paint all your corrugated pieces white. Um, if you don't love the idea of using corrugated cardboard, of course you could use chipboard. You could also use matte board if you wanted to do it in different colors. Um, foam core, anything like that um, will work really well. So hope you enjoy the project and I'll see you next week.